This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the webinar hosted by Mirabilis Design on trade of power performance using network on chip, HBM2, DDF5, and high performance ARM cores. I myself, uh, Tom Jones, along with Deba Shankar, will be hosting this webinar. We do have uh, engineers on standby, so feel free to ask any doubts or queries in the chat window. So let's uh, take a quick look into the agenda that we are having. So first, um, we'll be going through the architecture exploration of semiconductors and processes. So um, in that itself, we will be uh, looking at uh, what are the different use cases that a user might be interested in and what type of analysis are we looking at and what is the type of uh, uh, modeling or details that we are putting into our virtual presentation. Then we will be looking into the modeling methodology for electronic systems. Then we will be taking a look uh, look into our visual sim libraries and uh, how they are meeting the architecture exploration needs. The, then we will be looking into the visual sim uh, system on chip uh, design implementation using network on chip demonstration and analysis. So we do have a fully functional, fully implemented ARM CMN 600 demo model which is shipped with the tool itself. So if you're having the tool installed, uh, kindly take a look into it. It it is it will be uh, it can be used in your template as well. And then at last, we'll be looking into uh, Mirabilis Design Company profile. So we will be starting off with exploration of electronic systems. So uh, what we have here is a full-scale uh, visual sim system on chip implementation. So this is uh, the um, ARM uh, CMN 600 network on chip, uh, which has been implemented in Visual Sim architecture. So the the catch here is that we can configure it in any way that the user wants it to be. So the con the configuration features range from how many cross points do we want in the network to how many HNFs, how many RNFs how many SNFs, everything. And we, in this current uh, snapshot that we are viewing, we are using HBM modules as SNFs. So that too, uh, we have a pull-down parameter to specify whether it should be operated in HBM or HBM2. So users can uh, do a comparison on the throughput obtained fairly easily on the two use cases, and then compare them side by side and see whether it is necessary to go abroad, uh, go overboard with HBM2 design or HBM. So, and we can uh, replace this HBM stacks with uh, DDF5 modules also. So that is another uh, aspect where which the Visual Sim Excel said. We have those library modules integrated to the tool. So if a user wants to use an HBM or HBM2 or uh, DDF5 on the design, they can just drag and drop it from our library itself. It is fairly simple. So uh, we'll be looking into this uh, design uh, much into much detail later on. But at this point, let me just show you uh, what that model looks like. Um, yes, over here. So uh, before we uh, go into much details of how this this is set up and everything, let me just go ahead and run this model so that we can see what are the different type of stats which are coming in. So it's a fairly a big model, so it uh, might take some time to get initialized and uh, everything set up because this is set up in a way that it is all dynamic. So if uh, we want to have a four by four network, we just have to specify uh, that in the parameters, then that will be configured in a four by four mesh network manner. And if you want eight by eight, then that can be again mentioned as parameter one. Then there will be 64 cross points in the network. So that is the basic way that 
this is being set up so um, since it is still doing the pre initialize let us go ahead with the um, presentation we will check the results uh, once it is uh, brought up so uh, as we saw here this demo this um, full scale uh, system on chip implementation one thing i would like to uh, point out here is that not only the throughput or the um, latency requirements but the power consumption is also calculated here so while building a entire system on chip we are not neglecting any one of the key valuation whether it be failure analysis whether it be power power measurement power consumption whether it be the throughput obtained in the network whether it be the latency between the cross points we we tend to capture every one of those details and then use them to get optimized configuration so this uh, so what we have in visual sim is an integration of power performance and functionality all together so when we model a when we model a system we want to get it as close as possible to a real system so that is the main uh, motivation behind this so the power uh, the power table that we are using we have uh, it is built to such accurate uh, level that it uh, it is it is a basically done using a state diagram so that is also incorporated into the design that is so uh, let's just see if uh, okay uh, still doing okay that is fine so we will check that later then uh, so the so how can we make sure that the result obtained from visual sim is accurate i mean how can we uh, there should be a benchmark to compare it with or how accurate is the power gen power consumption generated by the visual sim so for that purpose to verify whether what we uh, are generated what we are generating from the tool is pretty much accurate we did an analysis so this is the power that is expected at one instance and this is the power that was generated by visual sim so at this particular point we can see the community sum came to 1.19 uh, and we are getting the same watts here 1.1 we, uh, we can see that it's between 1.0 and 1.2 it's one it's pretty much close to 1.19 so and uh, one another thing uh, that we have to um, keep in mind in here is that most of the power generation uh, generation tool or power calculation tool they are all static they won't vary according to the dynamic requirements or how a block is um, behaving after a certain time but as you can see here in the stat generated here you can see a graph curve here which cannot be possible using most of the uh, tools available in the market so that is where uh, the user uh, after user you feel the advantage here because you can see how at each instant how the power profile is varying so all this adds up to a significant uh, impact on our design and all those can be taken into consideration on choosing the optimum configuration of the design so what we have over here is a layout of uh, our uh, tool and we have on the left hand side you can see the library folder so all the modules that you saw on the uh, design that we show we saw just before were all obtained from were all taken from the library components so if i just go into one of them i can access most of it so let me just uh, take you there uh, so the plots are coming in okay let me just So that, uh, we uh, try to calculate or generate as much stats as needed uh, so that we are not missing out on anything so uh, 
Can we uh, get the other also? Yeah. So this one. Packet result. Let me close some of it. Uh, we will look into much detail later on, but uh, the request and the power plot here as well. And yeah, okay. So uh, so uh, let me, uh, so as you saw there, all the components that you saw uh, used in the design is being taken from the library folder. So whatever we want, we can get it from there. Then uh, what we have over here is a set of parameters on the right hand side. So the use, the reason why we use parameters is because we can make changes to the flow very easily by linking that flow to a parameter value. So if there is a certain flow that we want to take, uh, like uh, if you want to use a hardware accelerator or if you want to use the software alone, then we can mention that. For for example, here we have the execution sequence. So for the app one execution, you can see there is an IO, then CPU one, the DSP, and then back to IO. So we can mention the sequence there, and then that will impact. Uh, significantly on the model itself, what the underlying code has been defined. And then we have the reports and statistics, we have the power table, which is responsible for uh, calculating the power across different modules. Then we have the use cases here. So uh, as you can see here, we have the workload, the, um, the software task description here, and we have the hardware description on top. So we map all these tasks to a particular piece of hardware. So that is the basic flow that is happening here. We will uh, look into more details here. Uh, let me just uh, try to um, go over the block diagram. Uh, we can see the Okay, cast stats and then okay, let me let me uh, just quickly open it up and show you. So I'm uh, so that we can see everything on a go, like what exactly is happening from the beginning. So uh no one is left out so this is the basic uh the opening window where we can access a lot of documents the installation guide the getting started and here is a, a very useful document the quick reference guide so if we click on here you will get the details of a quick uh a brief information on what each of the components are used for or each uh, details on what parameters are what each of the library modules do so it can be used as a quick reference but so you can see here uh, the debugging methodologies the use of script or workload how can it be used then the scheduling algorithms for getting strict priority which component has to be used we can see that it has to be the scheduler block all those information can be taken from there so uh, let's go back to the um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a simple block diagram editor here. So as we were talking before, this is a library. So if I want to get a traffic generator, I can just go here and drag and drop it from here. So that will be brought up here. So on here itself, if I double click, we can see a certain set of parameters mentioned. And this means a element, which is like a one-time trigger. If I want a periodic transaction, I just put it to here. And what should be the period that has to be mentioned here. And then we also have the uniform exponential, then the normal distribution. Uh, just by changing the parameter value, a lot of these uh, changes will be taken place internally. 
so user is given that uh, capability as well and uh, you can see the processor generator uh, and we can see the processor modules here and you can see the instruction set the caches this exact grade caches in the memory you can go ahead and see a lot more um, detailed modules here So you can see the cycle accurate DRAM, the integrated cache, uh, the DDR5 modules, the HBM modules. So if uh, the user wants a DDR5 module, then all user how to do is drag and drop it and it will be, it can be used. It's simple as that. So if the user wants an HBM module, uh, user can just drag and drop it and they are good to go. And they can just in, integrate that to the uh, design that you have it. So let us go back uh, into the uh, model that we are we were seeing just now. So uh, let me just zoom to it. Okay. So as we saw, uh, these are the software task description. It means uh, if we double click on this task box here, it can see uh, to which uh, device it is going. App one X zero zero. So this is a parameter on the top level. You can see that up one here. So this is getting the first index here. So, so if I change the first index value, then that means the first task can be changed accordingly. So it is always important that we uh, link it to a parameter so that we have that much freedom in making changes at a later stage. So uh, let, let, let us just go ahead and run this model and see how the results look like. So over here we have the power plot. We can see the average value in the red red uh, line of okay, to the middle around two uh, two two point one, and we have the insulin went down. Then we also have the value which is for program plotter, which uh, gives us information on the app one processing time, well, how much time the, did the app one took it to transfer the packets across the bridge, then the app two processing time, the app two transfer time, then the total time across. So this becomes a nice pictorial representation so that the user can easily make an understanding on what is happening within. And then we are, we are also we can also see the separate plot on the app to latency access. And then we have a textual display on uh, all those processing time inputs, which can be also integrated into second uh, decision. Then we have yes this is another important task which is generated we can see how many packets entered to the queue and how many exited so we can see that one still hasn't exited it might be the reason that by the time the simulation got over one packet couldn't finish the in that rejected finish its processing so if it gets rejected then we can see the packet count here as well so it's it's fairly useful. We can see it is not being which is another important thing that can be um, taken out from this analysis. So let us go back to the uh, presentation. So uh, as we saw the, on the previous model, we we had a lot of plotters or uh, text displays coming in. So all of this is according to what the user wants. So if the user uh, is uh, trying to get the power consumption to a fairly minimal amount, then the focus will be on how much power the system on chip is consuming or the devices are consuming and what kind of a power management can be added to bring those uh, factors down or do we have to go with a uh, less performing but uh, fairly um, low power consuming modules. So all those details, uh, all those decisions can be made prior to actual development itself. And then there can be certain requirements where we are looking for the latency. So the latency becomes a critical factor when dealing with uh, time dependent uh, designs. So if it is a highly time critical application, then latency uh, becomes the hugest concern. So whether it can be the latency between the cross points or whether it can be the end to end latency, we want to make it all to a fairly reasonable value so that so then we will be looking into where why the latency is not going down where is the bottleneck happening whether any of the path 
hackers are getting dropped. So all of these become adds up to a huge value when we are building up the design. So um, so according to the user requirement, or if, if I want to get a more detailed analysis on the latency, then I can just do that. So uh, we will discuss that in de detail on the later slide right? when we are going into detail on the network ownership uh, model that we are having. So yeah, so uh, let us now take a quick look into the system modeling uh, using Visual Sync. So basically, the different so there are quite a bit of different modeling methods that are available for the user to take uh, take it to. So one will be the application and uh, software behavior. So if um, the user wants to let's say um, focus on how the task is getting mapped to a particular piece of hardware, then we can just focus on that part alone, and then we can see how is the end-to-end -end latency being, and how, uh, whether we need to map it to whether the mapping has to be done in a fairly efficient manner, or all those can be done. And then uh, the modeling can be on an algorithmic level. So whether like if you have an equation or an algorithm that we, whether it can be a scheduling algorithm or a arbitration algorithm, whether the clock and road or anything. So if you want to, if you have an idea or like if you have a uh, focus on like um, getting that, then we can implement that in Visual C as well. So for that, uh, if you want to uh, verify the correctness of an equation, we have uh, different um, uh, options or uh, menu items for uh, helping the user with that. We also have a long list of debugging methodologies which can help users see how much, even the timing analysis of this equation, how long does an equation takes uh, to uh, complete, and all those can be added in as well. Then uh, we can also do the hardware architecture modeling as well, where the user will be looking into finding which hardware uh, suits the current design platform. So whether it be ARM, ARM core or a RISC-5 core, we can do. We can just uh, take a RISC-5 and plug it in and then run it, and it is just as easy as it is. Because uh, with the tool, you will be able to. Uh, access almost all of the basic um, processor codes available and a demo model or demo template will be also available for the user to uh, look through. So what we have over here is a simple block diagram uh, of an SOP. Um, we have the um, ARM buttons, this one here, then the ARM controllers, uh, ARM XI bus, then uh, we have the bridges, when, then we have the memory units, we have uh, the hardware accelerator as well. So uh, when building this, when integrating this or building this program onto Visual Sync, there was a set of targets that we had to achieve. So some of them are uh, get the power consumption below one watt, get the power in only milliseconds to be greater than 13,000. And uh, so, so those two are the main targets that we had to achieve. So uh, there were three use cases that we did. So one was all the tasks were deployed in software. That is, hardware accelerator was not being used at all. And then second, we uh, migrated few of the tasks to be in hardware accelerator, and the rest is in software. And on that, we have tried to add some power management to reduce the power consumption as well. So, um, and this is the uh, model built in. Uh, Visual Sync, the same design when the, this same design when built in Visual Sync, we it will look it looks like this. So let me just quickly take you to the demo model, the one that we we saw just there. So oh, uh, oops, uh, this is a separate one. Uh, Just a few seconds. So, uh, what we uh, really will be looking into here is let us just a uh, quick look here. So, we, as you can see, we have incorporated the power management into this design. Then we have an ARM subsystem here. Then we have the hardware accelerator here. Then we have the best of all the ARM AXI bus here. Then we have the memory controllers. 
and then the use case the software the task pro everything has been defined at the bottom here so so the model is uh, okay let me just open it up this is a different model we'll be looking at the back tablet so let me forget it. so if you have the tool downloaded you can uh, access all of these demo models as well this can be uh, we will be sending you the presentation uh, shortly so that you can uh, look into it as well so we can see the arm subsystem here and the set of parameters that we have here the processor speed then the um, the cache speed the cache slice the miss memory name so and then we can map it to uh, we can map that as well then the best with uh, all of that has been mentioned here then we have the amber acceptors here so the set of parameters set of standard parameters for the actually have been also mentioned here so the user can uh, like uh, take the scheduling algorithm whether the arbitration algorithm has to be fixed priority round robin or a custom so uh, then the user user is given all, all those uh, customizing options as well so um, when I go ahead and run it, uh, let, let's see, uh, like um, in this particular use case, we can see the partition is software. So the entire, uh, we are running it all on software. We are not mapping any of the uh, subtasks to hardware uh, accelerator at all. So this, uh, so let me just go ahead and run it. So um, as we discussed, uh, these are some of the stats uh, which are generated for this particular design uh, this template. So we can see the uh, activity plot is here, the timing diagram, uh, which will tell, tell us which of the uh, resources are active at that instance. Then we have detailed uh, stats, uh, which is being uh, printed out on the text display, uh, the stats summary. Then we also uh, have analysis plot over here. Then uh, let me just zoom to it. Then uh, we also have the uh, let me just go and take the extraneous power. Then here, so we can see the power is well within the uh, value that we were looking for, and then we can see the uh, value just uh, keeps on dropping uh, like a uh, it, it keeps on dropping so uh, uh, what we are going to do now is uh, now we are going to try running the same design but with a small change so we can see the power consumption uh, details as well we can see hardware engine was not used at all here um, and you can see the power in milliwatts here the percentage as well so we can see the DRAM uh, consumes uh, quite a bit of power. Uh, so these are some of the useful analysis that can be taken into consideration. So for now, we are going to change this partition type from software to hardware. So when I do that, what is going to happen is this parameter is linked in here. So you can see software to hardware map main that partition. So it is done here. So when I uh, run this model again, we can see so we can see that um, initially the power was down uh, below one watt but it went way above one watt which is not our requirement so the power consumption uh, the requirement of retaining the power consumption below one watt that condition has failed with this design and if we look at uh, the uh, number of frames then we can see it is much higher here so we are able to obtain uh, we are able to satisfy one requirement while 
the other fails here. So then, the, so then in order to make both of them uh, go hand in hand, so we can see here, the power consumption, the power usage, hardware engine uh, takes up most of the power consumed here. It, uh, so we want to make sure that uh, the power consumption is also within uh, acceptable limit. So what we are going to do is we are going into the power table and add a power management. So I had commented it out prior to this. So I am just going to uncomment it and run it. So this particular uh, addition does the power management. We are we are uh, optimizing the uh, design even further so that the power consumption will be minimal. So let let's see how the result is going to look look now. So you can see the even so it uh, first went above the one word. You can see it is it is coming back uh, to uh, it is coming back. I mean, it is finally trying to saturate around the one word. Uh, so we can see that I mean, if the frame requirement is not also satisfied and the power requirement is also being satisfied. So we can see uh, we have finally achieved all those requirements that was mentioned. So this is uh, one of the ways that we uh, try different use cases and find the ones of how we can make those requirements satisfied, whether to uh, remove the entire um, uh, hardware configuration or just to add, just to upgrade, update the software alone will be sufficient. So those become uh, key here because changing the hardware from scratch is going to cost us uh, ton of money and resources rather than if we just stick with uh, changing the software or updating the software that issue can be fairly easily resolved. So that is one important thing that can be achieved which is uh, foresight on how we can uh, how our design is going to perform and how we can make our design optimized. So when we compare it uh, with each other, the run on soft hardware, we can see how much of an impact both of them had, how much was the frames per second. And when we added the power management also into it, we were able to bring the power consumption down to the required value. So what we have over here is uh, the ability uh, to uh, every the uh, way that so this in this model as you can see we have modeled a complex AI or ML processing in an image based application here. So all those um, algorithms, the equations, everything has been implemented to a detailed level so that we can get a quite satisfactory result. So let me just uh, take you to that model real quick that we have. Uh, so uh, we have the model here. So I am just gonna go ahead and run it. So we see all those different. Um, we can see the increase and uh, quadrature waveforms here, then the waveform obtained here, then the power plot, and then the power the output from the power amplifier as well. So all the, if, if the user wants to uh, model something along this line, that can be modeled in this environment as well. So you can see this that was a zoomed in region. So you can see the uh, the graph that is being uh, obtained for a fairly long amount of time. You can as a user you can just zoom into any of the uh, following region and see how the graph looks. Like. So uh, detailed analysis on the graph, everything can be done within the tool as well. And uh, you can see that information is not lost, it is uh, conserved in this um, in this uh, plot as well. So uh, we can zoom in and then we can see how both of them and we can do a comparison side by side whether the graphs obtained are 
uh, accurate and how the waveform from from uh, after modulation looks like. All of that can be looked into as well. So those are some of the uh, stats which were obtained from the uh, demo model, which we saw just now. So going ahead, uh, on uh, this is a uh, network on chip demo model that we had implemented. Uh, we 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 have the much detailed version of the CMS 600. Uh, so when starting the design, uh, when we start with the model building, we first try to get the basic flow accurate. Then we add in more more detailed functionalities, more uh, dynamic features, and uh, we build on that basic uh, template. So first we have a template like this, and then we shifted over to much detail. So at starting we have a simple block diagram like this, and then we try to map each and every component to the visual sim block diagram, visual sim representation, which you can see on the right hand side. So let us take a quick look into the Visual Sim libraries and what are the uh, and how the architecture challenges can be solved by uh, the library blocks, which are provided the tool. So uh, we one of the key advantages that we provide the users with is the availability of by providing a lot of um, libraries. So the benefit of having such a huge library around a thousand library modules is that almost everything that the user needs it is already being built in and is integrated to the library so if the user wants let's say uh, wants a time queue or a fp4 uh, lipo queue you can just drag and drop it from the li library if we want uh, a ddr5 memory uh, controller then we can just drag and drop from the uh, library if we want the ARM ARM processor code we can get it from the library. If you want the RISC five and we want to make a comparison between comparison of an application using RISC five versus an ARM code, then we can do it fairly easily because we we have both of them in the library. So uh, this this is uh, so a uh, user can uh, take a huge uh, get a huge benefit over here. So the modeling time can be reduced to fairly significant, uh, and uh, we can go ahead with the um, product implementation fairly quickly. So these are some of the applications that we have with using the Visual Sim architecture. So you know, we can see the ECUs. We have the high performance computing system. We have the network on chips. We have the SSDs. We have the um, display system. We we have we have the automotive system, the uh, ADAS system. We we have a template for all those applications. And uh, as a user, if you want to, if you if you are building something along the same uh, same scale or same range, then you can just use the existing template and build on top of it. So that helps uh, reduce the development time significantly. And almost every one of these templates are for the library components are documented uh, so that uh, it will be fairly easy, easy to follow as well. So now we, will, we are going to take a look at uh, a detailed look into how we have defined or how we have done the architecture exploration of network on chain. So for this, uh, we, we are going to take a look into the ARM CMN 600 uh, network on chip. So when we started building, so when we started building this, uh, uh, there were a lot of questions that has to be answered, like uh, how, uh, what happens if, uh, how can we model this? Like uh, I, I want to go from configuring a 4x4 mesh to 8x8 instantly, and how can we? Um, incorporate or how can we specify what are the devices connected to each of these cross points how can it be so if we look at here like this is a uh, this is the last day like i mean we built from a simple template and then we built it to this much detail here 
so if i if we look into this uh, block diagram here this was this is all it was so we got uh, two device ports uh, one for the uh, processors or the rnfs and then one for the uh, snfs or the cas slices then we had four directional ports so this was the initial design and then we took it to this level of detail so uh, if let me just uh, take you over to the um, model that we have so uh, on this particular template on this particular cmn 600 uh, demo template we tried to use the vm stacks vm2 stacks the ddr5 module it's produced and uh, the, those were one of the uh, one set of analysis that we did and then we also did um, the system address map configuration changes so uh, let me just show you uh, what the top level parameters look like so you can see the x dimension y dimension so you can see i have this way eight and eight so a total of eight by eight so 64 uh, cross points will be there then the device threshold then the fledge size then the router frequencies then the same time then the snf qof register value selection then we have the channel buffer size then we have the burst width by uh, then we have uh, uh, some debugging parameters as well check values so those are some of the parameters now if we look into some of the databases that we have used so this becomes important because if you look over here i have uh, what we what we can call as system address map so this says uh, a request coming from the rnf if it is within this address range it has to be sent to the hnf0 if it is within this address range then it has to be sent to hnf6 so the user can specify those address mapping very easily like uh, we just have to mention it here if the user doesn't want to make a very uh, that much of a detailed uh, specification, we can just mention all those default values to go into this field, the minus one minus one. So if any of the address doesn't come come within any of these ranges, then it will be mapped to the default mapping. That is SNF zero. So and then we also have the RNF configuration file. So as you can see here, you can see. Uh, the connecting XP you can say to which XP is connecting to and then to which device port. so uh, from the basic configuration of an XP there are two device ports and four directional ports so to uh, to one of uh, to to the device ports we connect either the RNF the HNF RNI the HNI or the SNF so the RNF uh, the HNF are the uh, cash coherent compliance uh, modules the rni hni are not cash coherent supported so when the request comes from the rnf the, which is this uh, use uh, depend using this one file we can see the bytes minimum the bytes maximum if you want to generate the payloads on a random scale then you can use the range between this and then here we are using a random address generation or a sequential based on this address min and max as well so uh, basically what is and similarly we have the hnf config file uh, specification then we have the rni hni then the snf so since we are using the hbm stack of eight channels each we can specify where each of these channels are being connected to which to which snfs so those men those parameters of those specifications are done using this database over here then um, we have even taken this to another uh, one step further by defining an snf system address map which means the misses coming from the snf can be again will be looked into this snf system address map and then we will get to which snf or to which hpm stack it has to be sent to so that has been done so now, uh, when when we here, uh, 
uh, which are which is having again look here uh, like um, so we have the RNF a certain set of parameters you can see that I have defined that it we have the SNFs again to RNF here and then we that it do so this and then if I look at the SNF again that it do so this particular demo model points into y is x then 32 rnf 32 snf 32 so it is use case uh, that is defined by the arm itself so uh, during that so the basic flow is that from the rnf it will generate the according to the system address map it will be uh, goes and then it will, it will be going to its destination via different xp so when it reaches the SNF, it will look into the snoop filter and see whether uh, any other uh, uh, RNF has made the request. So if uh, there is a data already being loaded into, then we get the data from there. Or if a write has been done, and then we try to inform all of those to update the memory location. So now, if uh, after the snoop filter, if the cache, if there's if there's a cache miss, then that will be sent to SNF, which will be located which to which SNF that will be obtained from the SNF system address map. So when it comes to SNF, it will be um, uh, sent to one of the HPM stacks, and then the data comes back, and then it this cycle repeats. Repeat. So, uh, so that is the basic for here. So let me um, okay. So let's see. Um, let's uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at the presentation. So uh, some of the notes on the uh, system on that we have different, this is just a recap on what we just now discussed. So we as, as we said, uh, there is a uh, 64 XPs in the current demo model. We have uh, 32 RNF, uh, which can be uh, used to plug in the ARM S77 cores to generate the request to the SNFs. Then we have 32 SNFs, it can be DDR4s, DDR5s, HPM, or HPM 2.0. Then uh, for this particular use case, we, in order to uh, do a mass max use case on the snooping, we had uh, made very few amount of RNS and uh, SNS. Then uh, 32 SNFs, then uh, since we are using HPM 2.0, we have done four stacks of it. And then uh, different tables for configuration. And uh, one key important thing is that we even had integrated the power table too. So the reason why we are using the dynamic instantiation is because it has to be dynamic in the sense if the user wants to just have 16 RNFs or 8 RNFs or 3 RNFs, then that has to be uh, done fairly easily according to the user specification. So that is why we are using making use of a library component known as dynamic instantiation. So uh, as we discussed, these are some of the top level parameters. You can see the X dimension, Y dimension being mentioned to eight and eight. And then uh, these are the list of requests and messages going to. So we have the read no snoop, which is uh, just a normal read. And the read shade, which means the read with snoop. So it will be looking into the uh, snoop uh, filter and uh, getting the information. Then we have the right no snoop, which is a symbol right. And then we have the right snoop, which is added with the snooping capability. Then we have uh, other additional uh, three more messages like uh, the read node share data, uh, then the read clean and the clean unique as well. So all of these list of uh, all, all of these messages have been integrated onto this uh, demo template here. So uh, this is a basic template on how we have defined the uh, power table here. So we can see almost every one of the modules uh, power has been uh, added to the uh, consideration, the RNF, RNI, HNL, uh, the cross points, even the wire power, the wire construction, wire power construction, everything has been added to our current uh, demo template. So uh, we also have the power management feature as well. So if we are uh, uh, using the S77, then we can do it with uh, the retention mode as well, or the functional mode. 
then uh, we have the power management features done here uh, we have set the person on the parameters for the rnf and the snf here then let's look at this obtained so uh, we have the maximum end-to-end -end latency uh, which uh, is a uh, bar graph representations of the x axis shows the rnf number so it keeps on so for all the rnf that we have incorporated we get the max maximum end to end so then we have the mean end to end latency then we have the maximum network latency so uh, the idea is to minimize what the latency is to a fairly minimal so we do have a use case where we are getting all of these maximum values to a certain nanosecond range as well. So we have the power plot obtained from the model. So we can see uh, the power and watts here. We can see a certain uh, spike uh, at the starting here, and then uh, later on it, the average power uh, saturates to a fairly uh, constant value. And what we have over here is the throughput value. So if you look here, the total uh, MB, uh, MB, MBPS, MBPS value, you can see it is um, 40 Gbps, right? So uh, this much, uh, that much is the uh, range of values that we were able to uh, send it across. So, um, this is uh, in this uh, test case or use case evaluation we uh, try to uh, provide maximum strain uh, or stress on the network and see how much of a uh, throughput that can be obtained so uh, we can see uh, from the tool we were able to generate uh, a max use case scenario here and we can even take this uh, to uh, further so it's all about the configuration of the parameters and the way that we configure the network on chip, the way that we position the RNF and SNF. One thing that we have to look here is the way that we position those uh, modules and the way that we configure the system address map is having will be having a huge impact because if the misses uh, have to fetch from a memory location which is at three or six bobs away, then it has to travel through multiple cross points. So the delay between them becomes increasing. And so we have to make sure that the network is configured in a fairly uh, short of manner. And the algorithm that we have used for uh, routing is XY routing algorithm. Yeah. So we are just going to look into uh, how much of an improvement this is. Uh, so, entire system uh, how much of uh, network on chip that, that we built. So the entire system that we saw here, the uh, CMN 600, it was put together in a span of four weeks' time. The entire the use case where we were able to obtain. Uh, it was all done dynamic cases were done in a short period of four weeks. Uh, classic model design. So if you are looking for a, uh, then it can be put together uh, much uh, like a, even within a week's time. And uh, with uh, current with the proposed approach, you will be incorporating existing library components to the design. Then uh, we uh, we can even integrate. Uh, and analog domains as well when we have we can uh, do uh, trace evaluation and all of that so this becomes a huge boost to the architecture exploration so what we have over here is an iot design so uh, in, in the tool when you download and use it uh, the user is uh, we have the demo which uses uh, a demo of iot model so we, I think we, I believe we already have the template open here. So yes, so this is the demo model that we're talking about. So we can see the devices over here. Then we have the network over here, and then we have the data center over here. So on this template, if we look into the device block, 
you can see we even have the battery the energy harvester the power table then the unlock front end devices over here the mcu over here and then the bluetooth port so if we just go into this bluetooth port you can see we even have the state machines over here so according to how the user wishes to uh, model a certain component the user can uh, use those library components fairly easily and in the uh, mcu if we go ahead we can see the uh, risk y core over here this one this particular use case uh, uses the risk y core for its evaluation so we can compare the use case between a risk y core and an arm y core and see how much of an impact that has in both power consumption and in the performance of the so a little bit information on mirabilis design um so the company was founded in 2003 and along the way uh, so we have come a long way from there we had been a quite a bit of um, awards and um, trophies along the way for being the uh, best simulator of the year then we also had um, done the hardware modeling then we came with we integrated a lot of apis and uh right now we are at a stage where we are looking into the functional analysis and the incorporating the failure analysis into it uh, trying to see how much impact the failure can have on a particular design so uh what we are going to look over here is how the visual sim software uh, is uh, available for the users so when uh, right away while when downloading you will be able to access the software with libraries which means you can access any of the components and all the uh, customizing features will be uh, available for you then we will we, are, we will be also providing you the training or weekly webinar uh, so that you can get a feel on what has been added and how to use each of these components and how to use it then uh, we do provide uh, services on custom library development and training on using those uh, um, library components as well and for uh, we also provide we also do the architecture exploration and then we also have an option to do the architecture exploration for the clients and then we will give them give them the analysis and we we will give them the feedback as well. So uh, finally, a quick look into the different types of analysis that we do and the how that analysis uh, is obtained. So we have mainly the analysis is done on these categories, the power measurement and management, the functional and safety analysis, then the timing throughput performance analysis, and the entire uh, EE to the semiconductor and, uh, and spectrum. So do, during this, uh, we make all of this is done by using the library components either the hardware software and the network and by using the graphical modeling tools so uh, at the end what benefit as a user has from all of these so from uh, uh, from a user experience we had put together this data and we were able to understand that the model creation has been uh, cut down to just a span span of one month, and the analysis was all done within a span of uh, 2.5 months. And the uh, communication and refinement just took four months, and then we compared the performance from our tool to what uh, what the other tool in the market does. We can see a significant improvement here. So all of this adds up to how the resources, how much of our resources can can be saved, and how much money per project can be saved. So we can see the clear differences here and how much the visual sim can contribute to the analysis as well. So uh, that's all for today's webinar. And uh, if you have any doubts or queries, you can go ahead and ask them in the chat window. And uh, this uh, recorded session will be uh, sent to you uh, after the uh, meeting along with the presentation as well. So thank you guys for attending this webinar.